City on the Edge of Battle was a nice step up from Planet of the Monsters, but was still dissatisfying in many respects. By now, it was clear that the Godzilla anime wasn't going to be what many fans had hoped, but there was still a chance that it could all come together in a satisfying way that sheds new light on a story that up until that point had proven very divisive. And so the end of 2018 saw the release of the final chapter of the trilogy titled Godzilla the Planet Eater, which ends the controversial series on a high note. <sighs> With tensions high after the destruction of Mechagodzilla City, the survivors of Earth turn to Metfis and his strange religion for comfort. Claiming that their salvation can only come in the form of their god, Metfis summons the three-headed golden terror named Ghidorah, which has arrived to consume the planet. While Godzilla faces off against the existential nightmare, Hauro confronts Metfis in a conflict of philosophies that will determine the fate of the human race and the Earth they've been fighting so hard to reclaim. For many reasons, Godzilla the Planet Eater is the most watchable film of the anime trilogy. Of the three films, it feels like it has the most at stake, and the overall themes and ideas that are driving the story feel more digestible and coherent. On top of that, it introduces new ideas that take the Godzilla mythology into even more interesting avenues, ones that the franchise had only toyed with prior. In the end, it all comes together in a way that, when taken with the preceding films, makes the entire journey greater than the sum of its parts. The king of the void, not of this realm. Above all, what the Planet Eater has over the other films is the overwhelming sense of apocalyptic doom. Just like how Godzilla and Mechagodzilla were reinterpreted in radical ways, so too is King Ghidorah, and here it absolutely works. While it may be controversial to say, for perhaps the first time ever, Ghidorah lives up to the concept of an intergalactic planet destroyer. Its ability to traverse time and space is truly frightening, and the sheer cosmic horror of its being is conveyed in moments of genuine tension and suspense. The film takes it even further by having the Exif worship it in a cultish manner that is actually pretty unsettling. Together, these aspects give this Ghidorah a Lovecraftian edge that has always been inherent to the character, giving this film a real dramatic thrust that the other two films lacked. The Planet Eater is also the only chapter in this trilogy to have an actual monster fight, though those still hoping for a more standard, action-packed brawl will be disappointed. While the fight between Godzilla and Ghidorah is rather simple, it works as a visual companion piece to the bigger ideas the film is attempting to explore, and there are aspects of it that are compelling in their own right. And because of this, Godzilla is given more to do this time, though he is still treated more as an abstract than a character. By this point though, it is clear what the intention was with this Godzilla, and if you are willing to roll with it, you'll find there is a lot to chew on, and may even come to appreciate how it manages to be so different while remaining true to what the monster has always represented. The human cast is reduced to an even smaller handful in The Planet Eater, and it benefits greatly from it. Hauro and Metfis are the central focus, with both representing two sides of the existential debate that drives the film. Hauro continues to grow more likable as he grows more mellow and thoughtful, and Metfis becomes an even more interesting character as his true intentions are made clear. Much of the runtime is dedicated to Metfis tempting Hauro with his nihilistic beliefs, and while the ideas explored here are nothing new, it's kind of neat to see a Godzilla film attack attempt to be more brazenly abstruse, even at the expense of those looking for more conventional Godzilla fare. Within this limited universe, it is simply the natural conclusion. The Planet Eater has some of the most visually arresting imagery of the trilogy as well, mixing in images of beauty and horror in such a way that recalls the very nature of Ghidorah itself. And Takayuki Hattori's music continues to do much of the dramatic legwork, with his theme for Ghidorah a standout for how quickly it manages to convey how terrifying it is. Still, given all this good stuff, the Planet Eater is held back by all the things that held back its predecessors. Characters still lack depth, merely vessels for ideas, and without good characters to empathize with, there is little reason to care about the story. And that is really the biggest problem with The Planet Eater and the anime trilogy in general. It is so focused on exploring ideas, it forgets to tell a compelling story with characters to grow attached to, leaving you watching from a distance. It's divine punishment. <sighs> <sighs> 
Thus the planet eater, for all it manages to do right, can't overcome the shadow of everything that came before. There is so much to appreciate about the film and the utterly strange way it traverses the Godzilla franchise's time-worn ideas, but it comes too little too late, and serves as a reminder of how good it could have been had there been an emotional reason to care. It's easily the best of a trio of films that, when taken as a whole, works as an admirably risky and fascinating experiment that may get you thinking and little else. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.